December 6th, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. From here in, from here on in, I shoot without a script. This is live, you can tell. This is my script as well, so I was lying there. But ladies and gentlemen, rent heads out there everywhere. Um, Christmas bells are ringing. I hope you're at home drinking some wine and beer. Maybe you're having some pasta with meatless balls. Don't worry, it tastes the same. If you close your eyes, your eyes, Mimi, your eyes. So let's uh, light up a meme blaze with some posters and screenplays because we're not going to pay rent. That's right. For today's episode of Lights, Camera, Musical, we are going to take the subway to the Alphabet City and check in with some fellow rent heads as we discuss the film adaptation of the Pulitzer Prize winning and Tony winning groundbreaking musical Rent. Now I've got some special guests to provide some insight and laughter as we touch on every single season of love, all 525,600 of them from cups of coffee to speeding tickets. I am your host, Rob Weiner, and uh, there is no day but today, especially when Rosario Dawson wants you to light her candle. Uh, but before we get into all that, uh, we want to hear from you, your voice, get into the conversation if you like. Join us. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter, but if you want to comment and interact with us, uh, comment below. Allow StreamYard to use your name by going to StreamYard.com backslash Facebook. That's scrolling across the bottom there. If you want to comment below, if you're watching us on Facebook or if you're on YouTube, and if you're watching one of our archives uh, on our website or through our Facebook and YouTube channels or IGTV, well, we see you as well. Appreciate you joining us. Um, now, as we discussed on last month's episode of Lights, Camera, Musical, when we talked about Chicago, how, how the film Chicago and, and a little bit of Moulin Rouge before that sort of uh, brought into this mini renaissance of uh, these famous Broadway stage to screen adaptations. And I think with varying degrees of success, we had movies uh, in the mid 2000s uh, like Dreamgirls, uh, The Phantom of the Opera, uh, producers, Mamma Mia, and Rent, just to name a few. And what made Rent different uh, is they got most of that spectacular original Broadway cast to star in the film. Uh, whether that's a pro or a con, uh, we'll get into that a little later. And a strange choice to direct the film, uh, we had Chris Columbus, uh, not the explorer, uh, but the same guy who directed such hit films as Home Alone, Mrs. Doubtfire, and Harry Potter 1 and 2. So that was the person they tapped to direct a Broadway musical about the AIDS epidemic in the late 1980s New York City uh, that gave so many marginalized people a voice. All right. When you say the musical Rent, pretty much the first thing you think about is Seasons of Love. And it could be a cliche to say, but Seasons of Love slaps. And uh, we were talking about it backstage before we started. And Hunter, I know we've got a little clip. The movie actually starts with Seasons of Love as opposed to at the beginning of the second act like the Broadway musical does. But let's take a look at Seasons of Love, the opening from the film version of Rent. Yeah. In truth that she learned or in times that he cried In bridges he burned or the way that she died Seasons of Love always always gets you right here. I've had the pleasure to sing that a number of times. And uh, there's nothing like singing that uh, song with the group, with an audience there. And uh, we so miss, miss you, our audience, and we hope to get back to you soon. Now, if you've been living under a rock over the last, uh, let's see, 25 years, uh, the Broadway musical Rent is uh, 
based on uh, La Boheme, uh, the opera by Puccini. And uh, the, the stage version centers around these eight uh, sort of Bohemian nights in New York City. Of course, you have Mark, the film writer, uh, and Roger, the musician. And uh, there's a little, uh, we've got Angel and Collins, their romance happening. You've got Maureen, who dumped Mark, is now dating Joanne. And uh, you've got Mimi, the stripper, who gets uh, involved with Roger, but she's had a pass with Benny. Anyway, it all happens and, and works under the guise of the AIDS epidemic in the 1980s, but uh, it gives a lot of powerful messages. And we want to appreciate all of you joining us, uh, like Jen, or Redhead, like both things, both tied to the stage show as well. So the power of that show um, is undeniable, I think. You know, I was lucky enough to see Rent on Broadway uh, in 1998. And though I couldn't understand every word or lyric in the show, uh, the energy in that building was palpable. Every note on Roger's guitar was loud and electric. And for a privileged white teenager, it was probably the closest thing I'd ever been to going to a rock concert before. But that power... Uh, of the live version, those strengths are what, in my opinion, make that stage show so visceral and engaging. And it's not necessarily, in my opinion, the film's fault that we aren't able to recreate that. Uh, but that's just my opinion, uh, because I think there are a lot of good things in, in the uh, movie version of Rent as well. Uh, but uh, we've got some really uh, wonderful guests here to provide some insight. And the first person I want to introduce is my uh, partner, he saw the show with me uh, on Broadway back in 1998, and we've done many a duet of I'll Cover You on the piano in my mom's living room. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Farmer's Alley Theater Executive Director, Adam Weiner. Adam That's Weiner. right. That's right. I'm Collins, right? And you were you were Angel usually. I mean, you'll be oh, wait, no, 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 we pushed it up. Castle. Uh, <laughs> do you remember singing that uh, on the piano with me? Sure, man. That song slaps, too. <laughs> there are there are some I will undeniable. There are some great great melodies that definitely become earworms that stick in your head uh, to this very day. I think so. But, now, uh, Rent, thank you for having me on. I'm very excited to talk. You're, about. you're very welcome. <laughs> uh, now you were right in the rent zeitgeist because you were 18 and 96, not to, to age you or anything. So were you a rent head? I, I guess I was on the fringe of being a rent head. I remember the first time hearing it was at a cast party uh, for a show, like my freshman year in college. And some of my buddies were like playing uh, What You Own, right? And they started lip singing to it. And it was like, what is this song? And it just, I went out and bought the soundtrack. And uh, I will admit, I did not know Angel was a man for a long time for the <laughs> <laughs> the soundtrack, but uh, it just was something that I played over and over, and it captured, I think, my generation. It was our generation's hair, definitely. It was one of those shows that came along uh, and just captured everybody when people older than us wonder, what is this phenomenon? Kind of like what Hamilton did uh, a few years back, and I don't think there would be shows like tons of different shows like American Idiot to Hamilton without a show like Rent to come That's along. Funny. So you definitely have to, regardless of how you may feel about the show, whether you like it or not, you have to respect its place in American musical theater and and how it's inspired so many future works of art. Well, I mean, the the sort of like people rising against the system sort of musical is, is not new. You know, as you mentioned, sort of like hair was in the uh, 60s and then he had Jesus Christ Superstar in the 70s in a way. Uh, Les Mis in the 80s, Rent in the 90s. Uh, then you've got like shows like Spring Awakening, even Avenue Q to an extent in the 2000s, and then you know something like Hamilton nowadays. Your, but your perception changes. Like when I was 18, I was like, yeah, these young Bohemians, they they you know give it to Benny and those uh, you know those executives. And nowadays, I'm like, Benny's the hero of the show. And we can talk about that later. But anyway, I'm sure we will. Thank you. <laughs> well, aside from Adam, we have a two wonderful. Uh, former Farmers Alley Theater alums who were able to actually uh, portray, uh, were in Rent, uh, at our good friends over at the Barn Theater in Augusta, Michigan. I want to first welcome in a bi-coastal singer, actor, director. Uh, she was seen in Farmers Alley Theater and the world goes round. You may also recognize her from her roles at the Barn Theater, most notably as Belle uh, opposite some other beast in uh, Beauty and the Beast. Uh, she's performed internationally, done lots of really cool commercial work and she's with us right now. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome in Miss Andrea Arvinigian. 
Hi. <laughs> Hi, Andrea. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. You know, we were reminiscing off stage of six years ago, right yeah. now, uh, that you and our next guest were starring in uh, And the World Goes Round. The World Goes Round. Yeah. Last, I still miss that show. We just had like such a good little close knit group. It was delightful. <laughs> yeah. You got something on your face there, man? Yeah. No, I, 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 it's because, never mind, never mind. Uh, Andrea, why don't you let our audience know what you've been up to since 2014? You know, well, <laughs> um, I was a resident artist at the barn for a while, and um, I also did a little tour with Disney Cruise Line, um, and then transferred coasts from LA to New York, and now I like to bounce back and forth a little bit. Uh, but now we're here in the pandemic, in the <laughs> parents' basement. <laughs> right, you know. Uh, waiting to see what's, what's next. Well, Andrea, I want to thank you because actually Farmer's Alley has an event coming up uh, this Saturday starting uh, called Home for the Holidays, which is another digital uh, concert event that we've uh, put on and, and tickets that are on sale now. And we've actually, we actually asked you to perform a little bit and... Uh, we're so thankful, you know, put some of those Disney skills to work, right? Yeah, it's going to be fun. Everybody tune in because we're going to have a good time. <laughs> a great collection of uh, homegrown artists like Andrea, who, you know, she was uh, um, from the area, has gone off to big things in L.A. and New York City and uh, still able to come back here and share her talents with us. So we really appreciate you joining us. Now, Maybe I'm going to throw it to somebody or my next guest, uh, but I'm going to say his bio first um, because I know he's having some tech issues perhaps in Mississippi, uh, but we'll try to get him here. Um, he's a multidisciplinary storyteller. Um, this young man has uh, worked at Farmer's Alley Theater as well as uh, the barn through. You've seen him countless times at the barn, uh, and he actually performed as Angel in the Barnes version of Rent in 2018, where he won the prestigious Wild Award uh, for Best Supporting Actor. Uh, he's been recognized by Broadway World and uh, is a proud member of Actors' Equity Association. Um, he went to Brown University, got his MFA, Roosevelt University, Chicago College of Performing Arts. He's gone everywhere, um, and I hope he's here with us now. And that's Mr. Jamie Grisham. Is he oh, here? Says here, moving his phone and charging and then trying to come yep, back. I'm okay. getting texts from Jamie. He's having severe technical difficulties. That's, you know. Um, but he's going to try to get back to us. As soon as, as soon as Jamie gets with us, I'm sure that Hunter, our fabulous producer, is going to bring him in. Uh, but before we talk yeah, about just that. Just make, make, make the audience wait. Make them wait for Jamie. <laughs> exactly. Sorry. Jamie's got the following. I mean, I don't know if you've been on his Instagram page lately. Uh, but... Uh, <laughs> Any memories from doing Rent at the Barn with, with uh, Jamie? Yeah, actually, we were texting earlier about it because since we knew we were doing this, we've been, like, talking all week about Rent. Uh, <laughs> but my, you had mentioned how special Seasons of Love is and how that song, like, no matter when you perform it, like, it gets to you. I played Alexi Darling. Um, Mark Cohen, Alexi <laughs> Darling, <laughs> Darling, from Buzzline. Um with Seasons of Love, that first cast sing-through of the show, I remember, like, I'm first soprano at the end of the row, so I have, like, the full view of the entire company, and we're singing this song, and I'm just looking through, like, face by face and seeing Jamie and these other people that I had, like, performed with and known for several years, not even just at the barn, like at the Civic or Farmer's Alley or wherever, and just these faces. It was, it's really emotional. Because um, it Absolutely. makes you reflect on those relationships. But. You know, it's one of those anthems that just transcended the show. I think will last farther. You know, even if you've never seen Rent, you've probably heard Seasons of Love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. pretty, yeah. My biggest memory with Rent and Seasons of Love is probably that episode of The Office where they all sing it to Michael Scott. No, I'm just kidding. But that is great. <laughs> um, so. Before we bring Jamie in here, or when we can, we will we will integrate him in. But the movie Rent, when it came out in two thousand five, you know they brought back, like I said, most of that original cast. You know, you had Anthony Rapp and Adam Pascal, Adina Menzel and Tate Diggs, uh, Wilson, Jermaine Heredia, 
Um, and who's the other one I'm missing out? Uh, Jesse L. Martin, of course, from Law and Order. For Daphne Rubin Vega. <laughs> so Daphne Rubin Vega and Freddie, uh, Freddie Walker uh, Brown, uh, they were not asked to bring back. And um, but I, I, I think Daphne Rubin Vega herself was like, I'm too, I was too old to play Mimi back when I did it, so I'm not going to do it for the movie. It's all right. She's she's gonna she's in in the Heights the movie, and she's going to be awesome in that. I oh doubt. yes, oh the in the Heights movie. Um, we think maybe we have Jamie. Uh, if we can bring him in. That would be wonderful. Uh, but you know the, those those cast members. Adam, you know, your thoughts about bringing the original cast back. It's, man, when I heard that they were doing that, and it was 10 years later, uh, it just struck me as, as like, is this going to work? Is it going to work? And is it going to, uh, even with, uh, you know, they've aged 10 years. I, I think they made the right choice because it, what it, it's ultimately for me, it's what makes the movie special because you have this document of these singers and people who were basically picked plucked from obscurity to do this show. I mean, the story of Rent the Show is almost as interesting as the show itself. Totally. And, uh, you know, the journey to the screen, I'm sure. Was, and we see all these actors that have gone on, some of them gone on, well, pretty much all of them, to do different things and other things on the stage and the screen. And that's what lasts. But, you know, it's still the same thing as like, mm, are these guys still 40 years old and living in a loft apartment in the Alphabet City? <laughs> Well, I was doing some research, and, and most of the actors were born around 1970. So when the show was on Broadway, they were all in their mid-20s. Sure. When the movie was 10 years later, and now, you know, when they're closer to 40 than they are to 20, you know, does that affect the impact? Andrew, I know you rewatched the movie this, this past weekend. What, what did you think about bringing in the, back the original cast? You know, it's funny because when the movie first came out, I thought everyone was way too old because I was like the age of the characters, you know? I was like, no way. These people aren't early 20s. Like, boo. Um, <laughs> now, <laughs> watching it, um, I I really, I agree with Adam. I love that they use the original cast, especially since Jonathan Larson was not available to give his input, I think that oh. it's delightful that they had the opportunity to use these same actors if they hadn't aged too much. Like it wasn't like using the original cast of Blame Miz for the Blame Miz movie, which would have been crazy with like a 50 year old Gosette or whatever. But like, um, it was close enough to the show coming out that it, they were able to make it work and they had those connections to Jonathan Larson and what he would have wanted for those roles. So I, yeah, I, I think it works in the way that, that you guys have said, like sort of like as like this like piece that we now have this on film, you know, uh, to remember. And, and I agree that Rosaria Dawson does a great job as Mimi as well. I mean, I'm, just you, Sorry, I'm, I'm like, like, just through the first clip that we saw, a season of Love, with the character of Joanne, I can't remember the actress's name. Tracy, Tracy Toms. Tracy Toms, thank you. And she's singing it, which honestly doesn't really make sense when you watch the movie. Then why is, is it like places extra importance on Joanne? Why is she singing this solo? And we hold on, when in the actual show, it's sung by one of the ensemble members, right? And done. I well, I mean, the, one of the things the movie does is sort of, takes all the ensemble members and sort of pushes them away, which I think is another thing that, that perhaps uh, doesn't uh, do the movie. It ju and they are singing in a community theater auditorium or a community college auditorium, sorry. <laughs> well, that's just, one, that's just one of the many changes that was made in the adaptation uh, from stage to screen. Uh, the fact that they put Seasons of Love right at the beginning there. You know, in the stage version, it's at the top of the second act, you know. And to me, you know, that makes sense. You know, you're coming back in from intermission. You know, the stragglers that, that went to the bathroom or just getting back to their seats here. They still have this song here to sort of get them there. <laughs> uh, but uh, <clears throat> do you think it's successful putting it at the beginning of, this, of the movie here, Andrea? I, so backstage we learned I have an unpopular opinion, but no, I don't <laughs> think it's successful. As from a cinematic perspective, I think as far from like a Rent head perspective and people that are minorly familiar with Rent, but no seasons of love, and the traditional staging. I think that it's a nice nod to those people to have it right there. Um, but as far as storytelling is concerned, I would have preferred it where it's supposed to be and presented it just in a new way. 
Well, to me, to me, like to put it right at the beginning there, I don't know who these people are singing. I have no connection yeah. to them as of yet. I have no connection to these eight as a family, this sort of family that they've made together. So I'm not sure if like halfway through the movie was the right place, but, uh, or in some sort of, there obviously are montages of seasons of love kind of throughout the movie. Um, unfortunately, to my guests at home, Jamie is having major Wi-Fi issues, and um, unfortunately, we were with them right before we went live. Uh, but if Jamie can come back, then I'll come back. If not, we're going to have to have him back uh, on another time as well. I'm um, cool. We get to talk with Andrea. She's she's awesome. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, one of the other things that was changed from stage to screen, um, sort of this homeless subplot, a lot of the songs like, um, you know, Contact is not in there, uh, Goodbye Love, that the, the second just half. The, just the whole Washington Square, like, montage there at the end of Act One, right? Is that? Yeah, all the Christmas bells are ringing and, and it's beginning to snow. Those are some of my favorite tracks on the original mm -hmm. CD. Well, and with Contact, the thing that I miss about it, I understand that cinematically it would have been weird because it's such a conceptual number. Um, but I miss that moment that they give to Angel to right. that final moment, which we don't get really in the movie. You get, you know that Angel has passed in the movie, but they do it in a way like during Without You that it, he just slips and there's no man. The, uh, there it before we go to the funeral in the hands of a more inventive and i don't know if christopher columbus was hand tied by the studio or whatnot but to me overall um halloween is one of my favorite numbers in the show and it killed me that they didn't put it in yeah, <laughs> yeah especially as someone who was like when i was a teenager i was like you're a mark, oh, I'm mark. You know? yeah you're i'm a mark. mark you know so um, <laughs> especially because mark is that one that's watching he he's like the one to survive, he says. The observer, He's experiencing yeah. Everything, hap everything is happening to everyone else, but he, as the survivor, is also going through something, and we don't- Everything, like everything in the movie is very safe. Mm -hmm. uh, safe and- yeah. Almost in a way. What, what did you say? Sanitized, almost. Yes. When I remember, I, when I think of Rent the Musical on stage, it's sort of, it's dark, it's black, it's rock and roll. There's that table, the metal table in the middle of the band is off in the corner. Yeah. There's a sculpture up, you know, the sculpture that they make of just it's like found objects. Dangerous. Yes. It's, it's a dangerous show. Um, if you want to use the word edgy, then fine, say edgy. But to me, you know, it, it, it's, it's like a rock, a real rock musical. And Chris Columbus, Mr. Home Alone and Harry Potter comes in and it's very sort of just like, this, I think, just the sanitized version of, of you know, New York yeah. City, and, and but, you can tell there are sets and you know stuff like that, and the color. They make it. They make it today, though. All those numbers, like Andrew, like Contact, I definitely in there. Oh, yeah, well, it. like even with the mainstreamness of it, like the whole point of all of these people is like we're here to live a bohemian life and not be mainstream. So let's take the most mainstream director, right, right, and try to make a right. movie. Um, right. Frank and Shepard's right. Yep. Over the moon, there are no cow backup dancers. Where did they go? Like, <laughs> but you do have you do have that shot of uh, Adina Menzel from above <laughs> suckling on the teat of uh, Bessie or whatever. So accurate. I did. I forgot but that, that, that was Chris Columbus. Like, uh, you know, some of the things that I did like as far as what they did filmmaking, you, you have a lot of montages and stuff like that. I think without you, sort of that juxtaposition of Roger and Mimi with Angel and uh, Collins, I think that works well. I think the stuff they did in Tango Maureen, where it sort of went to this fantasy sequence, that's one of my favorite yeah. sequences in, in the movie because it is something different. Um, so let's talk about some of those performers. Um, who is the standout performer in your mind, Andrea, in the, in the movie? You know, I always do love me a good Jesse L. Martin. He's incredible. <laughs> like you, he's I, so charming. I, I'll cover your reprise, man. You said for you say finale B, but man, I'll cover your reprise. No, reprise. every time, every time in finale B reprise, when they get to when your heart has expired, I lose it. It's I, impossible to keep your tears back and the feelings back in that song. Um, but he, his performance in the movie was incredible. I really loved Anthony Rapp. I really loved, um, 
I mean, Tay Diggs is Tay Diggs. <laughs> Tay Diggs. Tay Diggs. I've had a man crush on Tay Diggs most of my really adult life. Beautiful. <laughs> on stage, you don't always see the acting happening as much as you do on film. Um, and I think that those actors really succeeded at transferring their stage performances to a different medium. Whereas like Adam Pascal, I think pulled back a little too much in places where you weren't seeing enough happening. Um, yeah, I can see that. Now, well, speaking of, but before we move on, speaking of Jesse L. Martin, one of his big act one numbers is called Santa Fe. And I believe we have a video clip Hunter of Santa Fe. So this is uh, Jesse L. Martin and also Wilson Germain Heredia, Adam Pascal, and Anthony Rapp singing Rain Santa Fe. Pack up all our junk and fly so far away. Devote ourselves to projects that sell. We'll open up a restaurant in Santa Fe. It's hard not to smile. Two, two things. I think that sequence was another really inventive one. I like what they did it in the subway station. Second thing is, man, they're touching a lot of those poles and surfaces. <laughs> and sanitizer after that. As, as you watch, you watch media that's made pre-COVID, and you're like, oh my god, why are they out without masks? You know, they're not touching, you know, or something like that. But I, again, like those those people on the train just were like the most like happy to like watch these people, you know, sort of sanitize, you know, onlookers. Well, and it's so funny because as a person that takes the train regularly, when there are people in my train car, like showtime, and they doing start that, doing, doing exactly that, I yeah. could not roll my eyes bigger. Like, you don't want it happening around you. <laughs> so, like, you know, like, those people just were really accepting of the showtime and the people twirling, like, good it's musical. <laughs> um, Adam, Adam, who do you think is, gives us standout performance in Rent the Movie? When Sarah Silverman showed up as Alexi Darling, <laughs> she just, you know, um, I think, you know, thinking about it, you know, Andrew, Jesse L. Martin's just fantastic. In, in, in the show, I mean, but you know, really, I mean, we talk a lot about the original cast, but we don't talk, I don't know if you're saving it, but Rosario Dawson's pretty she good in the movie. She, she's really good, she holds her own, and she had a really, really, really tough job. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember tons of hate for her. So, and now she's like, you know, today That's she's true. over the world right now, but. You know, uh, you know that Rosario Dawson and Tracy Toms, who played Joanne, did a really good job because you don't hear the hate for them. <laughs> and in fact, I think Tracy Toms is. is she was on Broadway favorite. too. Tracy Toms ended up doing it, right? Yeah, yeah, she did do it on Broadway afterwards, and she's had a nice little career as well. Um, and that will lead us to a question I have: what What do you think is the best scene in the movie Rent? So, so here's what I've got here. Of course, we have the opening seasons of love, whether it's at the beginning of the show, middle or end, whatever Andrea likes. Um, <laughs> you know, I also put the opening rent where, you know, you've got the, the visual of the people throwing the fiery screenplays and uh, music. You're burning it. <laughs> um, uh, Tango Maureen, I thought, was another one that was... I, I like both those performers. I like what they did with the little dream sequence, you know, with when they had Adina Menzel come in with the red. And I like that they we get to see Maureen instead of this big lead up in the in the Broadway in the musical version. She doesn't come in until like 45 minutes into the show. Um uh, Will I, of course, is a very poignant, touching moment. Um, you know, we can talk about La Vivo I'm a little later as well. Uh, but for me, my favorite scene, um, is uh, Take Me or Leave Me uh, between Adina Menzel and Tracy Toms. And uh, before we get into discussion here, what Adam and Andrea think, Hunter, I know we've got a little bit of Take Me or Leave Me to show the audience as well to get us back. This is at, of course, Maureen and Joanne's engagement party. And- We um, sung this duet too, right? Yes, we have sung this duet as well. Much lower register. Yeah, bro. but let's see Adina and Tracy uh, sing it right now at the video.
Maybe now you two can get back together. Wow. Well, uh, <laughs> Isn't that funny, that line? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, mom. Um, what is Anna DeVere Smith doing in there as Joanna? I don't know, but it's like, yeah, it's Anna DeVere Smith. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I love when people sing angrily at each other, so... <laughs> Oh yeah, um, never can you like really scream in another person's face more than when you're singing at them. I always imagine it as a private number between just the two of them. So taking it out in the open and having them go around this house was interesting. Yeah. I love and speaking of Jesse L. Martin, like when they leave the, the reception room and then like Jesse L. Martin and, and the groups are like follow them and he's like chasing, running into like follow them with his champagne. And that's pretty funny as well. Another day. Love another day. Oh another day. I mean that You light my candle. I mean everyone. I, you could make make a case for. I, I, mean, I, I know mine, but I mean, what's what's your fit? What's your favorite scene, or what do you think? It's, is love, it's La Vie Bohème. It's in the Life Cafe, and it's the most, I guess, like this is what it was like on the stage, because they have this long table here. And you got Benny on one end, and you got the whole cast, and they go through it. And in many ways, you can make it. There are seasons of love, but La Vie Bohème is such an iconic. I guess, you know, from the show is, and with all this, like, we didn't start the fire type of lyrics <laughs> about everything that's inspirational in their lives and what it means to be bohemian. And uh, and it's, they're so energetic, so full of life. And then it ends with this whole relate, you know, the relationship stuff as well. So that's my favorite scene that I could watch over and over. Andrea, what was it like performing in La Vie Bohème? Did you have to do all the hand motions and like- Yes, Jamie choreographed them for us actually. <laughs> it was- a blast. Wow. Like, um, it's like just so like just watching it again the other day like brings back just all of that joyful energy. Um, my costume was modeled after the girl in the original cast that has like the furry bra and like the buns. Yes, on I remember. Uh, <laughs> so we were, you know we're like <clears throat> dancing on tables and like it was I, a really good time. I'm telling you, uh, the liner notes to the Rent CD. First of all, this is this was right at the early stages of the internet, but like you had all the lyrics right there and all the like black and white photos. And I was, I remember like scanning every inch of those photos to like the costumes, the set. That was just like blowing my mind when you know, 15 year old Robbie. So um Hunter, I know we have a clip of La Vivo M. And so uh, since we're talking about that number, um, let's take a look at what we're talking about. So Hunter, let's uh, cue up that La Vie. I still know all the words. You don't have to play the clip. I know all the words. <laughs> Best man. So they get all the couples together, and then Mark just masturbating by himself, jamming. <laughs> like, no. Well, and I love that they kept the full song. That song is epically long and intercuts in so mm -hmm. many places, and that is the one number that they didn't bastardize. <laughs> True. True. No, exactly. Well, I have, I have another question here, um, and we'll talk about the pros and cons a little bit. We talk about what's aged the best uh, from the show. And one of the things that I think has aged the best, um, I don't think I'm going to get much pushback here, is that Rent was a show about representation and, you know, giving a voice to people that maybe had not had their voice, whether on stage or screen before, and normalizing, you know, uh, living with AIDS and the LGBTQ community. Um, and this is 1996 we were talking about when the, when the musical came out. Um, they didn't have any problem with that cast. You know, that was a multi 
multidimensional, multicultural cast, and uh, really, uh, it's it's unfortunate that we had to like celebrate it like that. Like this is one of those shows that was, you know, had so many different colors of the rainbow, but it really was, and the movie's the same way, obviously. Absolutely. And, 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 and I mean, to tack on to that or piggyback on that, I think one of the things that aged the best is the cast itself, the, 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 the actors involved, the original cast. Because, again, like I said, they, these were people that were plucked from obscurity to be in the show. And then they basically had careers. And pe- all of them are basically still working now because of this show. And would they have had – they must have all – they did a good job. Whoever cast that show, you know, must have done a good job. They knew what they were doing. I mean, the Jeffrey Seller, right? Uh, Jeffrey was, Seller, uh, I saw, I saw in the U of M uh, alum, go blue. Anyway, but um, they, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Would the all these actors have had as big of a career as they would have had without Rent? I don't know, um, but they had that chance, and Jonathan Larson, these producer people, gave them that chance, and they proved it time and time again over the last twenty five years. I mean, th- look at Adina Menzel just alone. She's had iconic roles for le- for three straight decades. If you want to mm-hmm. talk about Rent then to Wicked, then to Frozen. I mean, that. I mean, just having one of those would be enough to, like, you know, give you a career, you know. Yeah. But, uh, she doesn't have Tay Diggs anymore, or does she? Does she, she does not have Tay Diggs anymore. No. <laughs> um, the thing that aged well for me, actually, um, was re-watching it now during the pandemic has been really interesting, uh, especially in La Vie Bohème when they got to the line, not dying from disease that hit me extra hard because New York is going through really similar things right now to what they were going through in the movie Rent. People are dying of disease. We saw that huge spike back in the spring that we're trying to avoid happening again where there wasn't even enough space in the hospitals and people are unemployed and unable to pay their rent and getting their eviction notices and there are laws being passed to help them with that and just a lot of the things that our main themes of rent are have become like oddly relevant again. Um, so watching it just hit me in a completely different way. This yeah, time. I, yeah, absolutely. I was watching some footage from the eighties of some of these AIDS protests and these mm-hmm. people screaming like we're we're dying here and you're not listening to us, you know. So and again, it goes back and back to that sort of fighting against the system that that wronged you and is not listening, and you know. I think the fact even that Jonathan Larson wrote this, and even though it was 96 when I came out, this is a lot of people's, you know, access to that world, uh, you know, to uh, these characters. You know, we maybe it never. And it seen, still is. That's kind of the sad thing. It still mm-hmm. is. Yeah, to see like gay relationships uh, on screen that were fully fledged, that were three dimensional, where people falling in love, breaking up, you know, love, life, death, everything in between. Um, so just just bravo upon that. I agree. Um, you know, we mentioned it already. Of course, uh, the music, uh, the earworms are real, folks. I mean, there's not. Um, I mean, I was. I've, I've had a love-hate relationship with Rent all my life, I want to think, but I still could do every single lyric and song note from that show uh, just because he has, Jonathan Larson, you know, gone way, way, way too soon. Um, you know, he cool worked and he worked at the barn, right, Andrea? Yeah, he was the Barney. When we did our production, we actually closed the show with a projection of like pictures of- That's very cool. There and yeah, it was- I mean, this and Tick, Tick, Boom, both. I mean, I think all, all those songs, there's there's not really a skippable. I mean, the, the Rent CD is basically the whole show since it's an operetta. And I don't remember doing a whole lot of skipping, skipping, skipping. It, it's something that uh, the variety of songs, the music, the characters, it's it all keeps you engaged. Yeah. Well, it's actually something like that I found lacking in the movie was all that little recit- recitative that links the songs together. When they cut it, that cuts such important dialogue that all of a sudden you're like, wait, how did we get here? <laughs> it's almost like it doesn't work as a movie. It went like hit to hit rather than just honoring those moments. Thank you for that information there, Franklin Shepard. Um, yeah, no, you're, you're totally right. And, the, and, and I, whenever I watch the movie and there are musical lyrics that are turned into piece of dialogue, they always stick out like sore thumbs to me. Just because oh, and lame like, is too. They do it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 
Um, two two really quick things that I think also age really well, uh, and that's uh, Adina Menzel's booty, um, and also <laughs> Saturday Night Live skits that use Rent uh, as material. Uh, I, and I would just want to point out to anyone. Uh, if you search uh, f on YouTube or Saturday Night Live, like Rent, there's this great version of Little Rent, start with Amy Schumer as as uh, as Mimi Marquez, and because it's little, and it's like all like middle school kids doing Rent, but so it's not AIDS, it's diabetes, um, and so they just amazing. take out the word AIDS and replace it with diabetes. It's like Roger, take your insulin. <laughs> So it's so and MPH did the the Save Broadway sketch and he's like with Rand, the Pulitzer Prize winning musical. Yeah. He's got those Anthony Rapp hand gestures down. <laughs> of course, MPH did, famously did mark in the second uh, Broadway tour or second uh, national tour. All right, so let's talk about what's aged the worst. And Adam, I know you have some hot takes here. And Benny as a villain, I think, has aged the worst in your mind. Now that you are Mr. Corporate. And, That's right. Uh, <laughs> well, no, wait a second. When this show came out, none of us, my friends and I, could understand. We just couldn't understand the bohemian lifestyle. It's like, why wouldn't you take this deal that Benny is offering you, that we're going to make these condos in this building. You have your studio on the top. You can pay if you're rent free. You can live and do whatever you want. Make your movies, write your songs. What's bad about that? You're selling out. I don't, it just boggles my mind. Yeah, and, and then that the movie like millions of dollars now. Yeah, and then the movie like um, Mark, you know, Anthony Rapp's like getting three thousand dollars to like work for Buzzline. I'm like, okay, well then that's pretty good, son. But then he like hands the whole check to Benny. Like this should cover us for a while, and it's like, should but it? I, are, are, these like, are these nitpicks? Are these nitpicks? Are these what's <laughs> aged the worst though? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, I have a, is this nitpick or age the worst when I say like, is Mark really talented? No, every single person that's watching right now can make a better movie than Mark Cohen. <laughs> <laughs> because you know what, you know what they call movies without scripts that you're showing us, Mark? Home movies, okay? And we've all made those. But they're edited really cool, man. They're oh, documentaries. Mm -hmm. Right now, Mark would be a TikTok sensation. <laughs> <laughs> True, he would. Here's also what's aged the worst to me: how they treat their families. Like, <laughs> mom is calling up on Mark to check in to see how he's doing. The family is around for Christmas, and he's like, "I wonder why I live here." And then they call, like, "Oh, poor mom that checks in on her son wants to wish him a merry Christmas." He sends him a hot plate. <laughs> okay. Uh, before we get any further, I want to talk about some casting what ifs. And there's not a whole lot of casting what ifs because they did use most of the original Broadway cast. But for Joanne, I read on the Tribune on IMDb that Jennifer Hudson auditioned for Joanne and uh, she didn't get it. And of course, she famously did get Dream Girls and won the Academy Award for it. Um, and also, though, I don't know if you noticed in that Seasons of Love clip that Robert De Niro is one of the producers. And Robert De Niro tried to persuade his longtime friend Martin Scorsese to direct. Yes. But the legendary filmmaker was unhappy with the drafts of the screenplay he saw and, and uh, passed on the project. Still would have been a better movie. It would have been fascinating if Scorsese directed Rent. Like, talk about an <laughs> opposite from who they shows exactly like, you have christopher columbus making like wholesome family films and you have like martin scorsese like way over on the other end yeah what's interesting is this is the second movie we've done on the show where martin scorsese almost directed because apparently they steven spielberg wanted him to direct the little shop of horrors uh rick moranis movie so if you remember that anyway so we decided if we were going to make a movie version of rent today who would we cast in those roles? So I don't know if you've all thought this through, um, but um, let's just start with the top. Let's start with Mark. Uh, Adam, who, who would you cast in a 2020 version as Mark? I mean, you got you to gotta say Ben Platt, right? Ben, ben. Platt or, or his, his friend Adam Devine, maybe? I, Perfect, any of those Pitch Perfect guys. I had thought Ben Platt, but then my other thought was, and like interestingly, Jaden Smith, oh. like could be a interesting take on Mark. 
I thought of both of those as well. I thought you needed more movie stars since we wanted to like do movies. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I went with Taron Edgerton. You know? I thought of him too. I mean, like, I, I figure like Ben Platt's got to be in there somewhere because he's huge. So, like, I guess he fits in his mark, I guess. So, I mean, put Jordan Fisher who did the, the Rent Live. He was great yeah. too. Oh, yeah. Okay. What about Roger and Mimi? What about these star cross lovers here? What do you think, Andrea? Who would you like to see as Roger and Mimi? You know, those were ones that were, I, that, yes, Jody. I, have, I had Zendaya. I had Zendaya as well. <laughs> that's what we want. I want it right now. I had um, Zendaya as well. And I also, and then that's why I put Zach Efron as Roger. Because uh, it's a reunion from The Greatest Showman. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 yeah, what did, what did Andrew, you said Zendaya. What did you say for Roger? I couldn't really, there was nobody that was striking me as particularly hardcore enough. Yeah, like, does Jeremy Jordan fit or, or not? No. You know, does Jeremy Jordan fit or no? Hmm? Does Jeremy, Jeremy Jordan Lewis? fit or no? Maybe. We just want to rough him up a little. Like, yeah. I want someone that maybe does drugs. Like, <laughs> right. maybe not Jared Leto. <laughs> like, Adam maybe Roger is unknown. Maybe Roger is playing in his At own Adam Driver. somewhere right now, and we just don't know him yet. <laughs> yeah, if you have an idea of who you want as Roger in today's movie version, let us know. Yeah, give us. Oh, what a are what are wait? What are people saying here? Jeremy Jordan. Oh, Brendan Urie. Oh, Any? Brendan Urie would be good. Yeah. Is he the Panic of the Who's Brendan Urie? Yeah, Panic of the Disco. Panic of the Disco guy. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I don't know who that is. Yeah. See, we're gonna cast this film. Just we're gonna crowdsource this film right now. <laughs> okay. What about Collins? Collins and Angel. I I had I had I had David Diggs as Collins and MJ Rodriguez as Angel. I also had David Diggs as Collins, but I had Shangela as Angel. Okay. Um, because Shangela's a kill in the game with all of her seasons of RuPaul's Drag Race, and she has her HBO show right now where she basically like goes around to small communities in the country um, to help their LGBTQ members find their communities and it's just like beautiful and wonderful and her dancing is fierce and I'm just like give it to Shangela. That's my drag queen of choice. Well you're you're the drag you're the drag race expert on this panel right now. So I'm gonna yeah, I don't. It there. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. But um is John Legend too old for Collins? He's not had the right voice too. He doesn't really have because I had I had like him and like or or Brandon Brandon Victor Dixon who did the rent live who was oh, incredible. Okay. As Collins too. Yeah, I mean Tessie L. Martin's voice, you know, you just need that sort of like low register that very yeah. that is so nice. But what about a Anthony Ramos for Angel? Could he do oh, that? Could do it. From yeah. uh, Hamilton and now in the Heights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. MJ Rodriguez, uh, she was she's on pose, but she did uh, 2011 uh, uh, off Broadway, and um, so I thought she was in that. Uh, she does Audrey in that Little Shop of Horrors. Mm -hmm. uh, that they did mm -hmm. that was excellent as well. Let's see the clips. All right, for Maureen and Joanne. Okay, I went. This is. I'm gonna. I'm gonna age myself here because I've been watching a lot of Disney Channel stuff. Uh, because oh, only because I have two seven year old daughters. That, that's sure. Really sure. Uh, but you know you love the, Descendants. More so from the Descendants, we have Sophia Carson as Maureen and China Ann McLean as Joanne. And I don't know who these people are. That's Evie and Uma from Descendants, Adam. Come on, get with the times. All right, Adam, then, then, then who did you pick for Maureen? Uh, Maureen, uh, the biggest, one of the biggest stars in the world. Who is Maureen? Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. Wow. Interesting. And Joanne? Joanne, uh, it, I have a bunch, I have a couple choices. Uh, I just found out she could sing Carrie Washington. Who sang on that Disney <laughs> holiday special can sing? Uh, did, what about? No, no, you know, Z I had Zazie Beats. I don't know if Zazie Beats can sing, but she would be a good choice yeah. for Joanne as well. I um, I was thinking like, what can we do with these names? I think an interesting Maureen. We could go with Miley Cyrus okay. or yeah. Demi Lovato. Um, they both have that kind of like whatever totally vibe. <laughs> Miley Cyrus is good. Then she'd be good. And then for Joanne, maybe like Raven Simone. Like give us us like that that's so Raven all grown up vibe. I like that as well. I think that works. Um and then Benny, I don't I don't know. I just had Daniel Kaluuya because uh why not? I had the other the, uh, I had Michael B. Jordan. 
Uh, <laughs> sexiest man alive, baby. I was thinking like Donald Glover maybe, but I really love that Michael B. Jordan. He is I, the sexiest man alive. <laughs> I will watch any movie that Donald Glover, Michael B. Jordan, and Daniel Kaluuya are in. Yes. <laughs> all right. So, all right. I think we've got it here. I think we've got a cast. You know, you can't go wrong with any of those choices here, but, uh, you know. John M. Chu directs. Yes, John Chu, exactly. Who's directing in the house. Ava DuVernay. That's uh, Ava DuVernay. That'd be good. Um, so, Adam, I know you mentioned the picking nits a little earlier. Um, here's my biggest picky nit is uh, why would Benny take those uptight white investors to the live cafe afterwards? Because wow. that's just going to ruffle their feathers, man. And those two guys in this movie are the biggest, like, pearl clutching, like, just like off. <laughs> <laughs> Two, two women. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's the only place he knows in the neighborhood because, like, he's new money. Like, he doesn't know. But man, why would you want something? Why would you bring your Range Rover down there if you you know people are going to you know put their hands on it? Yeah. And firebomb it. Um, right. <laughs> I also picking this. I do not like how the waiter asked them not to put the tables together, and then they just go right ahead and put the tables together. <laughs> respect respect your wait staff, because they're probably an artist as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, but you, during, well, during what you own, does Roger really, in the show, does Roger really go to Santa Fe and back within a verse of the song? He does leave and come back real fast. <laughs> I'm like, did they just do it for that one shot where he's standing like in a, I don't know, the grand. He, like, he wore a diaper like that astronaut lady in Texas. That's a long, that's a deep cut right there. Wow. <laughs> Suspend that disbelief. Oh, well, you had what well, Andrea had a big picking net before I had the a show. Picking net. Yeah. I think that Mimi lives. Mimi is supposed to die. She died in Lava OM. She like is found and like passes out and like is completely like on death's door. And then in every stage production in this movie, like they tried a little bit with Rosario Dawson to make it more organic, but she always just pops right up to seated sitting there hanging out with Roger and she's like, oh, I had this, I saw Angel and there was this bright light and she looked good. And like, end song. It's, it's, Natalie. it's gotta, it's, it's. <laughs> gotta leave the theater. I don't know. It's like the, the song light at the end of Next to Normal. You gotta leave the theater with some hope and. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, just kill her. And like that, but that's me, so. <laughs> Well, I, will I don't know, but like jo Jody here makes it. She's like, I would take the job at Buzz, at, Buzz, at Buzzline a long time before Mark. Why can't Mark take the job at Buzzline and make his crappy home movies? Because he doesn't want to be a sellout. All of these people refuse to get jobs because they don't want to sell out. That's like... <laughs> just making the choice to not pay rent. Yeah. And because obviously, at least from what we can glean, Mark, Maureen, and Joanne, all their parents seem pretty well off. So yeah. I don't know. Right. So they're just, they're playing poor. They're playing poor. They don't really one, yeah. One of the nits, one of the nits I have to pick is that, you know, Maureen is, is bisexual. So of course they have to make the bisexual like totally like sex and flirt crazy. Like she's flirting with the bartender at her engagement. Right, she's party. constantly horny. Yeah. Come on. Do better, do better, Stephen Shablowski or whatever, whoever did the screenplay for it. All right, we're almost finished here. So I have one final question, and that is stage or screen, what is the verdict on rent? We're going to start with Andrea. Stage. That's the verdict. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess this is not a... a Come on. I mean, this is not... The, the movie... Like like we said, you know the performances, you know the music is great. You know it's it's wonderful to have this on film. I I, I don't think that it was the film's. I think about about as good as a film version of Rent potentially could be. But as I stated at the beginning of the show, there is nothing like being in an audience of a great production of Rent because 
the, the, all these flaws and these nitpicks that we have right now fall away because you just are you are enveloped in the music and these characters and you you live and die with them on stage over this scope of a year however long the show takes place and and yeah like you said finale B um, it pretty uh, pretty intense uh, when that comes through in the end and you, you leave the theater standing ovation crying smiling the whole time so uh, I think it's pretty definitive here that stage is the yeah. winner. Well, and like even with stage, like that finale B, you go to leave and the audience is singing with you at that point. Like it's that energy is not something that can be duplicated. Yeah, it's that communal experience that you get from people that are huge fans of the show and people that are seeing it for the first time, it's going to continue uh, in the future once we get back on the stage and productions of Rent will continue to capture generations, I think, just like Hair did, just like Hamilton will do. And again pieces of art that have places in american musical theater history are going to be timeless and we're happy yeah. we have rent for that and rent rent is certainly one of them oh well that just about brings us to an end of our hour here i want to thank my guests adam weiner andrea arvinigian jamie grisham we missed uh, you you would have <laughs> added so much to this especially maybe, uh, uh performance of angel i'm sure he had lots of insight there as well um you know, if you want to follow Andrea and Jamie, I know. Andrea I need someone for Broadway battles in two weeks, Jamie, if you want to to, to do it. Do any, it. Any, any plugs or socials that you want to share with us, Andrea? Yeah, I'm on Instagram at Andy Arvinigian, website, andrearvinigian.com. Otherwise, come and check us out for Home for the Holidays. It's coming up. Absolutely. And I know Jamie Grisham has uh, the same, you know, IG and I know he has official Jamie Grisham .com. Um, we, we miss you, Jamie. You're so sorry. This wasn't able to work out. But as Andrea said, yeah, we have something coming up at Farmer's Alley Theater. Really exciting starting uh, this Saturday, December the 12th, uh, Home for the Holidays. Um, it's this really fabulous production. I want to give huge shout outs to Jeremy Koch and uh, Kathy Millet for helping put this together. We were going to film some stuff at the theater. And then, of course, with COVID sort of spiking again, uh, we had to uh, think fast on our feet. And we've put together just a great collection of classic Christmas songs, new favorites. We've got this version of was the night before Christmas being read by 20 different community leaders uh, from arts organizations across West Michigan. Um, I may or may not be singing a version of Adam Sandler's the Hanukkah song. Um, so that is uh, on sale now at farmersdallytheater.com and runs for the 12 days of Christmas. Um, so please uh, join us for that. You can get tickets again by going to farmersdallytheater.com. And I just want to thank everyone joining. Thank you so much for commenting along with us. Uh, and reliving one of the you know the great the great musicals of the 20th century. Yeah, I like that. There's a great comment here. Screen got me into the movie after singing Seasons of Love in fifth grade choir, but stage made me love it so much more after the national tour in 2007-8. So stage for sure. Awesome. I'm looking forward to being able to read all those comments uh, once we uh, sign off here. So appreciate you joining us. I know next Sunday we're going to be coming back with a another episode of What's Happening Live to get everybody up to date on everything home for the holidays. And then there's going to be a special holiday edition of Broadway Battles. And so we'll look forward to that. Uh, but for now, I am your host, Rob Weiner, signing off. Thank you so much for joining us. Take care.